Yes. Uh, so we talked about earlier that the, the order of uh, goals in a query affects the, the result. Um, and uh, notice that when we did our earlier query, which was this one, we got a, a single uh, result, uh, L is equal to A, and we hit enter here. Now, if we ask for more solutions to this, if I hit semicolon, notice what happens. It uh, seems that it's trying to find more solutions, uh, but I'm not get, yeah finally i get an error which says out of global stack so prolog is really searching for an endless number of solutions here and why is that well if i only use the first sub goal here suffix a comma l and i hit uh, semicolon to get more solutions i get first l is equal to a the list a then L is equal to list that contains some element and then A, then some two elements and then A, some three elements and then A, and so forth, so on. Notice that I actually get endless number of solutions to this suffix query. Because, for example, a list that contains some element and then A is a solution to this. Uh, the list A is indeed a suffix in a list that contains two elements where the second element is a. a the list a is also a, a suffix of a list that contains three elements where the last element is a and so on so there is act, there are actually endless many uh, endless number of solutions to this query uh, but but only the first one here makes the query the original query true notice that this is a, a guess and verify query because uh, prolog guesses all the possible solutions for the first sub goal and then tries to verify them in the second sub goal so it guesses l is equal to a it verifies it and says yes it's true then it guesses this one and tries to verify it but it's not true because the, this list that contains some element and then the list a, sorry, some element and then the element a, is not a prefix of the list a, b, c. And neither is a list that contains two, uh, three elements where the first two appear and then you have a. That one is not a prefix of the list a, b, c. So, uh, Prolog in this case will basically run out of global stack. Now, if I, on the other hand, swap the order, so I have prefix, the prefix relation appearing first, and then the suffix relation. I hit enter, I get L is equal to A, I hit semicolon, and I get false. Now I do not get out of global stack error. And why is that? Well, if we do the same here, I only post the prefix query, the first sub goal. The one solution is L is equal to the empty list, because the empty list is a prefix of the list A, B, C. Another solution is L is equal to A, because A is a prefix of ABC. The third solution is AB. The fourth solution is ABC. And there are no more solutions. So in this case, there are actually a finite number of solutions to the first query, to the first sub goal. There are four solutions. And when I verify them in the second part, only the second one Only the second one is true. So here Prolog is not searching uh, endlessly in the tree. It, there are only four solutions to the first subquery, 
sub goal and uh, one of them it can be verified here so we can see that the order of the sub goals definitely matter in the first case we got out of global stack if we have the suffix relation appearing before the prefix relation but if we have the prefix relation appearing before the suffix relation we got uh, uh, we didn't get uh, an error. So this small example shows that one actually has to be careful when when uh, uh, selecting the order of the subgoals in a query. Now, the order of the rules also matter. Recall from our discussion when we started talking about this uh, prolog algorithm, we said that the sequence of execution in a prolog control part depends on the rule order and the goal order. We just talked about the goal order. Within a rule, the leftmost goal is picked first, and in the rule order, the first applicable rule is selected first. The first the, the applicable rule is selected first, and that's according according to our algorithm. Uh, it says for i is equal to 1 to the number of rules, do. So it goes through the rules in the order they are programmed. So imagine that we would swap the rules in our append relation such that the fact would appear after the rule. So now I have here a, a relation called which I call append2 uh, which has which is programmed in such a way that the rule itself uh, appears first and then the fact as opposed to remember how we put it forth at the beginning and this is the way that the append relation is programmed in the um, Internally, append, append is a, a built-in relation. You have the fact first, and that's generally what you have to do in Prolog. You have the fact first, and then you have a rule. But uh, in this case, I have swapped the order. The fact becomes after. Now, when I pose query like this, append append x comma s, the list c comma set. So what am I doing? I'm asking can I append a list that contains only a single element c to some list x and the result is the list set. Well, Let's look at the in the append relation we have a fact first. So one solution would be so notice we have append empty list yy. Append empty list yy. So if this is empty and this is and set is the list C, then we can apply the fact. So one solution would be that X is empty and set is C, is the list C. And that's actually the first solution that I get. But Prolog will try to find all solutions because according to the algorithm, it goes through all the rules. So it will select now this rule and apply that one and when I hit semicolon I get another possibility the possibility is that I have some a single element in the list X and that single element is then the first uh, element in, in set and then C is the second element and if I hit semicolon I get other possible solution where the X has two elements and the list set has three elements. Notice where, when I append C to a list of two elements, I get those two elements and then the list and then the element C. 
And this continues. There are actually infinite number of solutions to this query. Now instead of hitting semicolon, I just hit enter here to quit this. Uh, now, on the other hand, if we had programmed our append relation this way by having the fact after the rule, uh, this rule would have been selected first, not the append one, and uh, which means that the fact never kicks in. So, the effect is actually never applied and the we would not get any solution by posing this query here because prolog would go deeper and deeper into the search tree without ever being able to um, apply the fact. So when Prolog tries to prove this, it would try to convert that query into a right hand side here, send the new current goal into the algorithm, into the visit procedure that we looked at use again this rule to convert it to some right hand side and again and again because it's never able to use the fact to simplify uh, matters. So that's why we would actually not get any solution but just prologue would go deeper and deeper into the search tree until we would get out of uh, global stack error. So here we have seen two examples of the, where that, that show us that the order of the goals in the query matter and the order of the rules themselves matter. And the general rule for when you're building relations in Prolog is that you have the fact appearing before a rule. That is the most important thing.